Monday Night Raw family, Damian Priest issues an open challenge for United States Championship. Sheamus, Drew McIntyre answer it. They give us a great triple threat match that completely stole the show. The RK Bros, one more time, main event in Monday Night Raw. I want to tell you also when Bill Goldberg and Bobby Lashley are going to have their rematch since their SummerSlam feud. Also, Charlotte Flair and Nia Jax, they seem to have the feud for the Women's Championship. No Alexa Bliss, what's going to happen with Nikki Ash and Rhea Ripley out of the title picture? I'll tell you this and more more right here on Road Break. Uh, you are watching the number one podcast in the whole entire YouTube wrestling community and this is Juanzo. Welcome to every single one of you to Monday Night Raw Review. Family, Hey, I hope you have a great week now, like it's Monday, we're almost going to be Tuesday, so my best wishes to every single one of you, thank you for being with me one more time, and we're going to be talking about everything that happened on Monday Night Raw, a show that like in this particular week was actually pretty enjoyable, like I said, the triple threat match for the United States Championship was absolutely amazing, also like the main event was not that bad, only a few segments, you know, here and there in the middle of the show that completely don't make any sense, or you could easily go without, but I understand they have to give us three hours of this show, so is pretty understandable that for that reason they have to give us crap and also mix it up with some kind of like good moments and good segments so we're going to be talking about everything thank you one more time don't forget to subscribe hit that bell for notifications and also give the video a like so more people are exposed to us to the original road break and also don't forget now to check out the videos from last week right here we did like the empower Empowered like the first all women's pay-per-view like Chelsea Green World the Invitational Tournament Also, we got to see great matches like Camille and legit Leila Hirsch like really good stuff with the girls Diana Parasso versus Melina Diana Parasso also extends her feud with Mickey James Maybe that's gonna be a thing that is gonna end on Bound for Glory when it comes to impact You know a lot of girls from AEW now NWA like triple a like really great stuff so i really enjoyed this pay-per-view the review is right there in the channel don't forget to watch it family but now let's move on let's switch gears to like monday night roll like i said damien priest opens the show he said that like he's gonna start like doing the same thing that Rey mysterio john cena another like open challenge which is very common in the wwe is the easiest way to book the show so like he says that like he's gonna go and keep up the legacy of like these great united states champions that we had in the past so he's gonna try to emulate and do the same sheamus came out and that was the first one to actually address the champion and says he only needs one bro kick to come back and also beat damien priest get his championship back drew mcintyre then interrupts then he says that like the one championship that he has not held yet in the wwe that's the united states championship so he wants to actually win that tonight so he can be a grand slam champion but then we get to see mvp and also bobby Lashley, the almighty the wwe champion and he says that like actually he wants a match with damien priest championship versus championship winner takes all so he says then don't even pay attention to these guys they all suck they, it doesn't matter now we can actually have this as a great main event so Damien Priest seem a little bit excited about this they know they can give us a great match but in the end we got to see the RK bros also Matt Riddle Randy Orton they come out and then they said that like everything that MVP just says it sucks he's a little he's a little bitch and all of that so like good good promo between these guys and I mean all the main eventers were right here in one promo just to open the show which is okay because you need that gather you need the hook for people to keep watching it so Sonia Deville and also Adam Pierce come out and then they said that they're gonna make everybody's wishes realities because they said that they're gonna have a triple threat match for the United States Championship and that's gonna be Drew McIntyre and Sheamus go with Damian Priest all three of them and then we're gonna have MVP and Bobby Lashley actually going for the tag titles with Matt Riddle and Randy Orton defending because Matt Riddle has said that like they can actually beat them that they will be fine if they actually can main event the show so this was the beginning of Monday Night Raw and I think that like I said all the main players were right there so it makes sense and I liked it so you know good start for the show now we're gonna actually talk about the girls because Nikki Ash and Rhea Ripley seem to be our Naga team they're completely out of the championship picture like I said before so she's gonna go against Shayna Baszler a match that we've seen before on the NXT days this was like pretty decent you know Rhea Ripley's trying to get that to become like the number one girl in the num in WWE Raw but we'll see what happens because like the match was actually like I said pretty decent but then in the end you know we got to see Rhea Ripley beat him Shayna Baszler just because she rolled her up we know you know the Raw ups are like, the most effective moves in the WWE that's why they did that but the main story right here is the dominance and the power of Nia Jax 
they're trying to refocus on that they're trying to bring us back with like how powerful how dominant Nia Jax can be and you know that's why like she took care of like Rhea Ripley and know someone drop someone drop on the outside for Nikki Ash and completely push away uh, Shayna Baszler so they're trying to focus on Nia Jax and we're gonna tell you why in your just a little bit just because it seems like now Nia Jax is gonna be a singles competitor it's not gonna be like the tag with like also Shayna Baszler anymore so we'll see what happens but that's what we have pretty good interactions Rhea Ripley still looks good but then Nikki Ash it seems to me that like they're trying to like completely walk away from that you know train I don't like that I was a big fan of like Nikki Ash especially Nikki Cross having like this main event role I don't think that it's gonna last too long it's a shame but like she lost the title and now she's not even in the title picture anymore but there you go family that's what we had For the next segment family it was just like Jinder Mahal and also Veer going against the Viking Raiders and you know that like completed experiment with Jinder Mahal is completely failing why because like unfortunately he cannot be the same heel that he was like four years ago when the modern day Maharaja when they trying to be when he was became the WWE champion when he had like the Singh brothers with him like they're trying to emulate they're trying to recreate this it's not really working out because he's not getting any wins like he doesn't get heed from like the fans so he's just becoming a jobber and these other two guys Veer and also Shanky they're not really helping him out so that's why they had a match with like the Viking Raiders and it would just turn out to be a showing for them Mahal started dominating the match but then Ivar and Eric of course they get like the big comeback and the Viking experience one two three and they win and it's good for the Viking Raiders they need more wins because outside of like the RK Bros there's not really a team also AJ Styles and Omas they're not really a team the only consolidated the team is actually them so they need to regain like their credibility more momentum more wins for them so then they can actually challenge the RK bros and it can happen maybe towards the end of like extreme rules maybe crown jewel that will be a possibility but like we see that like Ivar and Eric are starting to get some wins more exposure that's what they need they have not quit on this idea of like the Viking Raiders like they're pretty good tag team and I got like the Viking experience is a great move so that was cool but again Jinder Mahal and also Veer Shanky completely out completely in the job team of like the WWE especially on Monday Night Raw so now let's go to like I said they gave us like a great 25 minute match United States Championship like Triple Threat Drew McIntyre Damian Priest and Sheamus what a great showing these three men gave us you know they put everything on the line and the main thing about this is like the title looks so special like they gave like so much seriousness to the title and that's what they need to do to regain like the importance of the United States Championship like great showing for Damian Priest you know also like flying Drew McIntyre will do the same Shame is always rough, intense, you know, always like dominant, always like really strong shots, really rough, like really dominating at the beginning, then Damien Priest will try to like on spurts, he will try to get the win, but then Drew McIntyre also dominated, Shame is also like with the white noise, like one from the top rope, also like the, like the breaker that he does, like Drew McIntyre also tried to fly, like this was like a really good execution, also like a suicide dive, really nice, like I said, and like the flow of, of the move, and also like Sheamus and Damien Priest were able to caught him so really like really 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 good also like of course they have to do the cooperation right here because it was like a triple superplex or like Drew McIntyre went from like a German suplex and that helped out like for like the suplex on to like Sheamus and also Damian Priest great showing I think one of the all the matches this completely stole the show one of like the best triple threat matches that I've seen on free TV Monday Night Raw then we got to see the clover leaf also like Sheamus had the opportunity bro kick but then also Damian Priest rolled out to the outside Drew McIntyre will hit the Claimer, and this was like allowed on Sheamus and this this allowed Priest to actually roll out McIntyre to fall into like the awakening and then one two three and then we get to see uh, Jamie and Priest actually they retain in the championship something that we thought that it was not possible but they have a lot of faith in Damien they wanted to make him like a baby face and one of like the main event baby faces so this is how this is the route that you should have gone so I'm really happy for Damien he actually can carry this brand he's ready to be that baby face the rest abilities right there promo abilities right there and also like the duality that he has he can be baby face and he can turn heel in like a matter of a snap like that he can just become a heel so that was really cool and also like a show of respect from Drew McIntyre hey you know what you beat me this time but hey maybe stream rules it'll be my turn they might have a rematch right here great great show great stuff for this too but guys also Sheamus they three of them did not look bad at all all three men like look good and actually they enhance this championship and their performance enhance like the quality of this particular wig on this show so let's talk about Bill Goldberg Bill Goldberg just got a promo right here they're asking what's going on what's the status of the injury of his son Gage he said he's still like his neck still hurts but like he's gonna come back to kill Bobby Lashley to kill his soul and he says that he's gonna need knee injury and, like I promise you at the beginning of the video 
Goldberg and Lashley is gonna take place most likely at Crown Jewel. And they're gonna save that for Saudi Arabia because you know like the they always pull on like the big matches, they're gonna do it right there. So we'll see if Goldberg wins the championship because like all the personal stuff is added to the storyline. So this could actually mean that like Bobby Lashley is gonna drop the belt to Goldberg, which nobody wants to see. But because of like the addition of like the son of Goldberg, Gage and everything is turning into that and that, hopefully not. I'm not a big fan of that. I think Bobby Lashley needs to retain that belt actually like all the way to WrestleMania. We'll see what happens, but this was like the preview that we have. So they're not gonna have the magic stream rules, but most likely will be crown jewel so like let's talk about of course like the 24 7 championship this was just regional again running away completely like fooling r2 and also kira tosawa this poor guy somebody called r2 a jobber like the other day on twitter he said well your mama might be a jobber but i'm not so like we'll see i mean great guy great talent but i mean right now he's not being used as a wrestler he's more like an uh, just a comedy act and the same thing for akira tosawa we feel for these guys especially because both of them can have great matches yet he can they can still go unfortunately creative and Vince mcmahon do not see it that way so we have to do just turn the page and now we're gonna go with do drop and eva marie Eva Marie, like remember last week she attacked Dewdrop, so it was about to like the time for them to have a match. This turned out to be like a really squash match, really great. You know, uh, Dewdrop or Piper Niven, how we like the real name that she has. She did a crossbody big one on Eva Marie and that completely killed her. Like the referee just ended up stopping the match because she was unable to perform. And in the end, Dewdrop just says, hey, and the winner is Dewdrop. So we get to see that the storyline is going to keep progressing. We're going to see where does it go. But for me, like they need to just completely like end it right here. Here, then do drop or like Piper Niven. I mean, she had a new theme song also, like a very more like poppy like, more like dancing, more upbeat. And then she came like dancing and uh, saying hi to the crowd. So maybe that's just gonna be her new gimmick, her new personality. That's fine. She's gonna be a baby face. Hopefully, they can give her a feud with Charlotte Flair or for any other title. She needs to have that. Piper Niven is a great performer. I will not stop saying that. So hopefully this is just the end for the evolution, an experiment that should have never happened. That you should have saved that money into something different. They didn't do it. Well, there you go. That's the results. That's the payoff of this. Nobody likes it. Nobody wants to see any more of this. Finally, let's move on to the next segment and we're going to see Karrion Cross Again, with like the mask. A lot of people making fun of him, saying that he's Shao Kahn. And also like all of those like, like warriors from the past. And that's what they're really trying to do. They're trying to recreate that. They're trying to make us believe that he's as dominant. He's a new force in Monday Night Raw like he can be like the biggest heel he can overcome anything and now that he's getting wins he won he beat Ricochet last week in a really quick fashion remember he had the win against Jeff Hardy two weeks ago and we with like Keith Lee also and this was the turn of Humberto Carrillo like this match was actually longer than I thought it was gonna be because Humberto actually hit a lot of offense on Karen Cross but in the end of course he came back and also he did like the hit that big shot that he does into the back of the neck and also like he did the Saido suplex and now they call it like the Saido get like cross and also like the straight jacket or the cross jacket and he made like a Humberto Carrillo tap out it sucks for Billy Humberto because he became another jobber I mean he started out with great feuds with Sheamus got injured in the process he has not had like any constant in like like in steady like career right now in the WWE more than jobbing so you know that's what they do to like the Latinos in the WWE same thing happened with like Angel Garza he's not there and even shown on TV anymore Andrade went to another like company now he's on AEW so there you go but in the end Karrion Crow they're trying to make him like this powerful force because when they debuted him like he started on the wrong foot losing to Jeff Hardy and also that translated into his career like the end of his career in the NXT that's why when he lost to like Samoa Joe everybody was happy and they didn't really want to see him anymore because they did not believe that like the NXT champion would lose to Jeff Hardy especially in that fashion but you know that's why they're trying to ride that wrong with his wins under his belt so we'll see what happens the addition of Scarlett will enhance a lot of like the character that Karrion Cross has but for now he beat Humberto Carrillo and you know the streak continues for Karen Cross. Let's talk about Nia Jax. She cut a promo because she's gonna have a match with Charlotte and this match was supposed to be in like kind of like a number one contender. Not really but like she said that she's gonna destroy the queen. She's gonna show who the most powerful woman is in the WWE. She remembers who she is right now so you no more tagging with like Shayna Baszler. No more like nice Nia. They're gonna see how powerful she can be. So like they had the match with Charlotte and turned out to be a pretty like a good match at the beginning. Probably the first five minutes and then became really slow low charlotte also i don't know what happened here maybe like there was not a lot of communication between the two but it turned out to become really really slow and boring 
And, you know, like Charlotte tried, like that was like the one thing she was always trying to come back. Like, because Naya dominated the whole match. And I guess that's the narrative. That's why you're like doing it this way. Because at some point, like Naya is going to become number one contender. And they're going to have a match like Extreme Rules for the uh, Women's Championship. Maybe we didn't see Alexa Bliss at all. So I don't know if they're going to continue with that storyline. Or they're going to come back to this. But in the end, big power bomb from Naya Jax. She also overcame like the figure eight. That she will not let the hole to be put on her. And Nia Jax ends up winning, and she surprises everybody because you know champions, especially Charlotte, she will not lose on TV unless like there's a bigger story to be told, and that's what they're gonna do with Nia Jax right now. I think that they're gonna push her, they're gonna make her look like the Nia Jax that we know. I mean, she hasn't been messing up in like a while. She has not gotten anybody injured, you know, in like a few months, maybe one, five, six months. It's not the Nia Jax that she almost kills Carrie Sane and all those girls that she got injured. No, it's actually he's just been doing her job in a nice way, so maybe that's the reward and of course you know the familiarity with the rock and all of that but now i feel that's because she's been doing putting good matches now they're gonna give her a shot at charlotte flair we've seen this feud before but you know they don't really have a lot of women build up so now who are you gonna get so they're gonna go with nia Jax. but i mean she looks strong she looks dominant she looks like the irresistible force that she always been so that's good on her let's go to the next one family there was a match that was supposed to take place on monday night raw and that was gonna be john morrison against the miss that didn't happen I, his plans got switched i'm gonna show you like a picture of what was like the car for originally but then then the car that we have right now is completely different like i said so he's gonna have a match against omas he says that like now a uh, baby face john morrison he's gonna have like this role in monday night raw we'll see what happens but he says he's gonna have the match with omas and he's gonna show him like how good of a guy he is like the most dangerous man in the wwe or like the most wanted man in you know the united states this is john morrison the match with omas this was only a show for omas actually to look good he actually like dominated john morrison like he tried to like go from the back he tried to get the win in the end a big power bomb like chokeslam that he does most likely the great Kali used to do that also a train they used to hook the same like power bomb and then they get the win so like omas beats john morrison and hopefully this actually tries to build a sympathy story for him because that's the only way that i will make me believe that john morrison can do something in the wwe he's really talented he's a great you know wrestler but unfortunately because of like the alliance with the miss the pair up with the miss like takes a lot of away from him so we'll see now that like he's on by himself and once they actually have the match they're probably saving it for stream rules so then you know we get to see a more convincing version of john morrison aj styles was right there in the ring so that turns out to be like uh, xavier woods no kofi kingston yet he's like thinking spending some time with his family they have a match with aj styles that was actually we seen this before when they had the field for the titles but now aj styles get the cup crusher on it and then they get the win aj is not all happy and he's like more dominant because right now he's being sidelined to just help him out to get to become that like a really powerful person or dominant force in the wwe so that was good and of course xavier is like they need to do something with him that's why they didn't to have this loss on monday night raw but let's go to the main event and the main event of course we got to see the rk bros going against bobby lasley and mvp for the road tag team championships this was good actually pretty good match all you know all guys main eventers and that was like the main thing of it like matt riddle also going against bobby lasley bobby lasley showing his like ability his dominance his power why he's the wwe champion randy orton always been that main guy you know that like he's been there forever always main event and mvp you know he knows how to carry these situations he knows what to do so that was cool you know get to see like right there like the british bulldog style suplex all the way up and then you know going all the flow all the blood going to like the top of the brain randy orton was dominating in the match also but then we got to see omas interfering aj styles was also trying to interfere because the feud with them is not over they want to get those championships back but these actually these distractions allow actually to bobby lashley to be outside of the ring and then that allowed matt riddle to hit the floating bro you know that move like that move from the top rope onto like mvp one two three and the rk bros get the win they retain the championships so that was really cool and i mean they're not gonna drop those titles anytime soon because they're trying to tell us this story that they're like really brotherhood they're like really com compact with each other like they understand each other there's the chemistry they have the bond so that that's what i don't I, I said to myself they're not gonna lose those titles right now and they didn't in fact so that was really cool and also they got to see a spear from bobby lasley on to matt riddle and it seems like bobby lasley was gonna get like some kind of like win or at least the upper hand at the beginning at the ending of the show and actually we got to see randy orton delivering the R the rko onto bobby lasley so the rk bros for the second win in a row they actually the ones that get the upper hand they stand tall at the end of the show when the lights go off and they're the ones celebrating because they retain those championships a pretty interesting man in a row like i mentioned family i think that like 
for the matches that we saw for example like the triple threat match that was interesting and great and also this match as the main event it wasn't that bad so like the show it gets like a thumbs up for me just because like, we're used to seeing three hours of garbage this was actually spread out so it wasn't as terrible as the normal weeks so we'll see like the build up for extreme rules is going to start like maybe next week and then also crown jewel because that's going to happen right after so we'll see where it does it go where like alexa bliss fits in and all these stories with charlotte and nia Jax. we'll see also like who's the next contender opponent for bobby Lash Lastly, for Extreme Rules, we'll see what happens, family. But this was the original card that they actually were gonna present us. Bobby loves the game. Sheamus, that didn't happen. They completely changed plans. Morrison and the Miz completely changed plans. Do Drop and Eva Marie kind of like happened, but in the end, you know, she's unable to compete. So a different version of Monday Night Raw, family. And also, don't forget, tomorrow we're gonna see NXT. This is the new logo. Yes, family, it is. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is. Uh, we're gonna go to like Sesame Street here. It is not a really good logo, not a cool thing. We'll see like the new repackaging, the new designs, the new focus, the new attitude from the NXT show. So we'll see what happens. It will be Jean Paul and myself talking about absolutely everything. So thank you so very much one more time. And you know, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, give the video a like so more people are exposed to the original rubric. I'm Juanzo and I say bye to you by saying, uh, the.